Welp, it's time for our third trip to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Let's talk about Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Big Day's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. So greetings my fellow YouTubers and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Dole, better known to you as the Big D. And this time around I bring to you a review of the 2004 fantasy flick Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Released by Warner Brothers, directed by Alfonso Cuaron, based on J.K. Rowling's third book of the same name. It was produced by Chris Columbus, David Heyman, and Mark Radcliffe, written by Steve Cloves. It's the third installment of the Harry Potter franchise. Now, if you have not seen my reviews for The Sorcerer's Stone or Chamber of Secrets, I'd like, I advise you to click on that card coming up right about now. There we go. And that way you can catch what you might have missed or see them again if you'd like before you go into this review, okay? I'll give you a few additional seconds, okay? As I get myself started. Sorry, everyone, just forgive me. I'm just checking my source. That ought to do it. Okay, now, and Daniel Radcliffe returns as the titular character, along with Rupert Grint as Ron Weasley and Emma Watson as Hermione Granger. And this time around, the film follows Harry's third year at Hogwarts and his quest to uncover the truth about his past, including the connection with recently escaped Azkaban prisoner Sirius Black. He and why he has um, to well connection to his to him and his late parents. Now, though this is considered to be many people's favorite of the franchise, and while it may a little more or less than the last film, the film actually opened during the summer of two thousand four. Uh, it opened in June. This film also has Michael Gambon as Professor Dumbledore, due to Richard Harris' death the previous year, well, not the previous year, whoops, sorry, in 2002, right before the last film came out. Cuckoo! <laughs> sorry, my mistake. We got some, we also got some new members, new additions, including Gary Oldman, David Thewlis, and Emma Thompson, among a host of others. There were some others from the previous movies back as well. So, for now, let's get into our story. Harry Potter, now 13, endures another summer with his dreadful Aunt Petunia, Uncle Vernon, and Cousin Dudley, the Dursleys, of course. When Vernon's sister, Marge, comes for a visit, well, she's kind of insulting him, especially when they're having dinners. She apparently insults Harry's deceased parents, and Harry furiously accidentally inflates her, causing March to flow away like a balloon. Fed up, Harry packs his trunk and leaves, unsure where to go. Soon, the night bus, which picks up stranded wizards, suddenly arrives and takes Harry to Diagon Alley. And let me tell you, that ride, that bus was so <laughs> hysterical. Yeah, it was so much fun. I mean, and Muggles don't even see the night bus. <laughs> anyway, at the Leaky Cauldron, Minister, of, Minister for Magic, Cornelius Fudge is waiting for Harry and pardons him for using magic outside of Hogwarts. Yes, I, which is one thing I forgot to point out in my review of the first two movies. Of course, Harry, wizards aren't allowed to use magic outside of Hogwarts. After reuniting with Ron and Hermione, Harry learns that Sirius Black, a convicted supporter of the Dark Wizard, you know who, Lord Voldemort, has escaped Azkaban prison and intends to kill him. As students return to school on the Hogwarts Express, the train is boarded by Dementors, ghostly prison guards hunting Black. A Dementor enters the trio's compartment, causing Harry to faint. 
Then, and of course, they meet with new defense against the dark arts teacher, Remus Lupin. He repels it using a Patronus charm. At Hogwarts, Headmaster Albus Dumbledore announces that the mentors are guarding the school until Black's capture. Also, Hogwarts groundskeeper Rubius Hagrid is the new care of magical creatures teacher. Well, its first class starts out pretty fine when it introduces the class to Buckbeak, which is a hippogriff. And let me tell you, that is a big creature if you've not seen this movie. <laughs> well, everyone just backs away for it because when he wants someone to um, agree and, so, and, well, Harry's just left right in front, so he was very careful with And boy, <laughs> Harry gets a right on that there hippogriff. Wow. Well, and things go fine for the class. Well, almost until he... Oh, Harry's rival, Draco Malfoy, deliberately provokes the hu the hippogriff who attacks him. Draco exaggerates his minor injury, and his father, Lucius Malfoy, later has Buckbeak condemned to death later on. Horrible. The fat lady's portrait guarding the Gryffindor dormitory is found shredded and empty. Terrified and hiding in another pain, she says Black entered the castle. Yeah, but however, and well, if that was enough, even with Lupin been being around, but on times he's not around, <sighs> Harry's least favorite teacher, Severus Snape, takes over. And trying to ask what is the difference between an animagus and a werewolf. And, of course, Hermione appears. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, because she's been going from one class to another, especially from, um, let's see, Professor Trelawney and her um, divination class. Really something. But anyway, once Hermione raises her hand before Snape, he's like, no one. How disappointing. But anyway, all that, and, well, he wants them to write... Two pieces on two pieces of on two pieces of parchment about animagus and werewolves. Harry just tells him it's question. I was like, "Can I suggest you take um do this?" And why have he's like, "Loss of limb will not excuse it." So during the stormy Quidditch match, the mentors attack Harry, causing him to again faint to fall off his broomstick. Harry is uninjured, but his broom, the Nimbus 2000, is destroyed by the Whomping Willow. Lupin privately teaches Harry the Patronus charm to fend off the mentors. Now, Lupin is pretty good, actually. Once he, um, well, well, gives everyone the charm of Ridiculous, which changes, um, something they're afraid of, well, the students are afraid of, into something much more fun and what have you. That was really something. Well, not only that, Harry isn't able to go to the, t the little town of Hogsmeade, which is not too far away, because, well, you know, the Dursleys. You know. So Fred and George Weasley give Harry their Marauder's Map, a magical document that tracks everyone at Hogwarts. And at Hogsmeade, Harry is shocked to learn that Black was his father's best friend and betrayed his parents to Voldemort. He also murdered another friend, Peter Pettigrew. More shocking, Black is Harry's godfather. Later, Harry notices Pettigrew's name on the Marauder's map, but dismisses it as an error. Yes, and again, calling the ant by Snape, but Lupin, well, takes Harry, well, in and, well, well, kind of has to take the Marauder's map, confiscate it. So after Harry, Ron, and Hermione witness this, this Buckbeak's apparent execution, Ron's pet rat Scabbers bites him and runs off. When Ron gives chase, a large dog appears and drags the two into a hole at the Whomping Will's base. An underground passage leads to the supposedly haunted Shrieking Shack. Inside, the dog is actually Black, who is an unregistered Animagus. 
Lupin arrives and embraces his old friend. Lupin is revealed to be a werewolf, though he is harmless with a special potion. That's what has why he was missing so many classics. He now knows that Black was falsely accused of betraying the Potters and murdering Pettigrew. Black discovered that Scabbers is actually Pettigrew, also an Amagus, and that he betrayed the Potters. Black escaped Azkaban to murder Pettigrew, not Harry. Snape arrives to apprehend Black, but Harry manages to blast him across the room, knocking him unconscious. After returning Pettigrew to human form and forcing his confession, Lupin and Black prepare to kill him, but Harry convinces them to turn him over to the Dementors. Now for the ending, you know the procedure, like always. Five seconds to sub this video, go to the description box below, and fast forward to the time below. If you've seen the movie already, please continue on after the five seconds are over with. Here we go. Okay, you've been warned. As the group departs the shack, the full moon rises and Lupin, who forgot his potion, becomes a werewolf. Black transforms into his dog form to fight him off. Amid the chaos, Pettigrew reverts back into a rat and escapes. The mentors attack Harry and Black and are about to suck out Black's soul before passing out. Harry sees a distant shadowy figure cast a powerful Patronus that scatters to the mentors. He awakens to discover that Black has been captured and sentenced to the Dementor's Kiss, which entails the removal of his soul. Harry tells Hermione the mysterious figure was his deceased father. Acting on Dumbledore's advice, Harry and Hermione travel back three hours with a time turner that Hermione has been using to attend multiple classes. They watch their earlier selves and Ron repeat the night's events. They save Buckbeak from execution and witness the Dementors overpower Harry and Black. The present Harry realizes that he had conjured the Patronus and does so again. Harry and Hermione rescue Black, who escapes with Buckbeak. Exposed as a werewolf, Lupin resigns to prevent an uproar from parents and gives Harry the Marauder's map back. And well, and well, Harry wants to go with Sirius, but he had to try and find somewhere, so yeah, because, well, you know what I'm, you, I think you know what I'm saying and why. Shortly after, Black anonymously sends Harry a new broomstick, the Firebolt, which he rides off, and thus we end the film. So, therefore, I say end of story, my friends. So what did I think of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban? Well, I must say it's really good and what have you. Now, it would be the last Harry Potter film, well, from now, to get the PG rating from the MPAA. The next film, The Goblet of Fire, would be a PG-13 rating, but soon, then, and Order of the Phoenix would be after that, then it would revert back to PG for The Half-Blood Prince, but the two-part Deathly Hollows both got PG-13 ratings. Anyway, the film was was very good, and I really did enjoy it. After finally revisiting for the first time, I think it's going to move up a little higher on my ranking if once I find the date for it. It received praise for Curran's direction and the lead actor's performances. Now, of course, the film is credited for marking a notable change in the franchise's tone and directorial style. Is often considered by critics and fans alike to be the best Harry Potter film. Well, in a way it is. While despite it didn't quite match up to the last film, the film went on to make $796 million worldwide. Now, there were some changes from the book, but that's too many to mention. Don't worry, I have read the book, and I actually do have it, as a matter of fact. The film would go on to be the second highest grossing film of 2004, losing to Shrek 2, uh, which also came out in the summer of that year. But nevertheless, I still enjoyed the, the performances we got from everyone. Daniel Radcliffe, Rupert Grant, Emma Watson, they were all good as their respected characters of Harry, Ron, and Hermione. Robbie Coltrane, once again, is great as Rubius Hagrid. Sir Michael Gambon as 
Dumbledore, I'm going to say he did very good. Now, actually, the producers originally offered the role to Christopher Lee and Ian McKellen. A scheduling conflicts forced Lee to decline whilst McKellen turned it down as he had played a similar character in Gandalf in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, which I'll be reviewing those next month. But anyway, he, he also stated it would have been inappropriate to take Harris's role as he had called McKellen a dreadful actor. Well, anyway, it's okay and what have you. He still is pretty good. I think he did an exceptionally good job. Again, we have Richard Griffiths and Fiona Shaw and Harry Millen as the Dursleys, of course. We have Gary Oldman in the role of Sirius Black. He, I mean, he's appeared in numerous movies. The following year, he would have played Jim Gordon in Batman Begins. Alan Rickman returns as Severus Snape. Let's see. And Dame Maggie Smith. Mac as Minerva McGonagall, who of course is the head of Grimmanor House and deputy headmistress of Hogwarts. She's also the Transfiguration teacher. I almost forgot to point that out. Playing Peter Pettigrew is Timothy Spall. Now we do learn that his his ad, he has an alias in name in Wormtail. Anyway, playing Lupin is David Thewlis, who was originally offered the role for Professor Quirrell in The Sorcerer's Zone, but turned it down. But however, he was Quirrell's first choice for the role of Lupin, though. Yes. Uh, according to this, he accepted the role on advice from Ian Hart, who was cast as Quirrell, and had told him that Professor Lupin was the best part in the book. Now, Thulis had seen the first two films and had only read part of the first book, although after taking the role, he read the third. Also, we have Emma Thompson as the divination teacher at Hogwarts, Sybil Trelawney. Now, divination is the art of predicting the future, really something. Various methods are described, including tea leaves, fire omens, crystal balls. Plus a lot of other things as well. Anyway, we also have others back, including James and Oliver Phelps as friend George, Chris Rankin as Percy Weasley, and let's see, and Bonnie Wright as Ron's sister Jenny. We have um, Mark Williams and Julie Walters back as Arthur and Molly Weasley, Tom Felton as Draco Malfoy. Oh. Uh, Everyone else is just back. Oh, yeah. I won't mention all completely everyone. David Bradley is Argus Filch, the caretaker, and Robert Hardy returns as Cornelius Fudge. Now, let's see. We have um, Lee Ingleby as Stan Shumpike, the conductor of the night bus. Let's see. Um... Yeah. So anyway, yeah, really something. Let's see. Also playing um, Uncle Vernon's sister Marge is Pam Ferris, who most people know her best as Agatha Trunchbull. Trunchbull. I was about to say trunch. The trench. I mean Trunchbull from Matilda. But anyway, the cast was really good. I love the story, this might may be missing things. The score was once again done by John Williams, who did an exceptionally good job as well. Alfonso Cuaron's direction was good, so everything was just good. So in the end, would I recommend Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban? The answer is, you guessed it, hell yeah. Anyway, this is worth watching, you gotta check out if you haven't. So anyway, let me know what your thoughts are on Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban in the comment section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me next time when I bring to you a review of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Excuse me. Thanks for watching, and if you like this, you may want to consider checking out my reviews for these other films from two... These... Well... 
the film that these other videos. In the upper left-hand corner is the review of the film that actually did be out Harry Potter in two, on the top films of 2004, and that was Shrek 2. Or if you would like, go to the upper right-hand corner and see my review for Disney and Pixar's The Incredibles, which was also released the same year. Or if you want some more spectacular type of fun, go to the bottom left-hand corner and see my review of Goosebumps from 2015, another book-based film. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.